So Jake Steinfeld joins us now. Uh, Jake, obviously news of this MLL PLL merger, probably a, a unique thing for, for you to learn of and hear of. When you hear about the news and you know that the history of the league that you helped found is living on, but not the name Major League Lacrosse, how do you feel about where we are in the, the landscape of professional outdoor lacrosse right now? Well, first of all, Travis, it's great to see you, buddy. I'm proud of everything that uh, you, you become a big star, man. It's nice to see and uh, everything you're doing on the network. It's really great to watch and you see how things are really growing. Um, hey, listen, uh, you, you know, this was th this wasn't even a dream of mine. I, I think a lot of people know the story, but in, in a quick nutshell, it was uh, uh, I had a television network called Fit TV. Remember back in 1990. Three, I launched it and sold it in 1998 to Rupert Murdoch. And my, my, my dream was to always own an NBA team. Uh, and uh, how things happen in life, life is about moments. And uh, I was doing a short-lived magazine called Body by Jake with a company called Hachette Filipaki. And um, I was on a plane ride back from Detroit uh, and, and had a magazine called Swing in my hands. Uh, which was David Lorenz' uh, custom publication job, that, which is Ralph's son. And uh, it was a magazine with kids were doing in their 20s. And I opened the magazine, and I saw a guy holding a lacrosse stick. And, and here I am in California. I left L.A. in uh, summer 1977. I hadn't seen the sport of lacrosse in 20 years. And I start reading an article about this young guy named Dave Morrow, who started a company called Warrior in his dorm room at Princeton. And I was intrigued. And I said, this guy is making lacrosse a lifestyle. And I got back to LA and as an entrepreneur, I've always called it dialing for dollars. And uh, I always like to meet people. I circle people's names. Uh, I called David Lauren, uh, asked for the writer of the piece, got to Dave Morrow. And I asked Dave a simple question. We had a fun conversation. Uh, is there such a thing as pro outdoor lacrosse? And uh, he said, no. And I said, well, there is now. And that was literally May 1998. And he and I went on this adventure, Travis, uh, to launch what had become Major League Lacrosse. And a couple of things. Um, I had told Dave, I said, look, I was not never a very good lacrosse player. Uh, but media was what I was excited about, marketing, promotion, sponsors. And I said, look, if you can legitimize me with the players, um, I feel that we can give this a really good shot. I wanted to change the rules. Uh, I wanted to make it more television friendly, more friendly for a bigger audience, a wider audience. So basketball being my first love, I said, let's add a shot clock. And I really wanted to add a two-point arc. And not just to add it, Travis, but to really speed up the game. Because everyone talked about lacrosse being the fastest game on two feet, but it could also be a very slow game. You know, when you fall corner the ball and a game could be uh, over in the third quarter when you're up two to one, uh, as as you would know. And and uh, with the two point arc, just like the three point play in basketball, you know you could be down uh, two goals uh, with seconds to go in a game, and the game is not over. And we got vilified early on, uh, but as we've seen, you know the NCAA added, uh, you know added that shot clock, and I'm sure eventually they will add the two point arc as well. And it's it's been a great, man, it, it's been awesome. As an entrepreneur, the MLL was like, was like a little child to me. You, you know, uh, the goal in launching, creating it, as I told Dave in the beginning of time, beginning of time in 1998, um, you know, as a basketball fan, a baseball fan, growing up, you had posters up in your room of your favorite athlete. And a young, a young basketball player could dream of going to college, then playing in the pros, maybe, you know, uh, or baseball uh, or hockey. But lacrosse never had that for a young athlete who could sit in his room or her room and, and have a poster up of their favorite player to one day aspire to be able to play professionally. And that really was the goal for me. Everything I've ever done in my career always revolved and revolves around health and hope and family.
And I, I mean, you, you outlined your vision for what you wanted the league to be. And those are visions that I think continue. You mentioned speeding up the game. It's a discussion we still have. And the PLL has sped it up even a little bit more. And the two-point arc lives on in the professional game. Is that what you hope your legacy is? Is that in helping found Major League Lacrosse and, and in the lacrosse community, you helped the pro game take a step forward? Yeah, yeah, listen, I mean, you, you know, we we were there first, uh, and there were many moments, as as I'm sure you know the history, uh, we, we put a fun, great book together called Take a Shot, where we really tell you how it all began. But there were moments, Travis, where, where this wasn't going to happen. Summer Showcase, after, after the six Summer Showcase games, uh, moments like in Rochester, the last game, where 5,000-some-odd people um, with not rooting for one team, but just rooting for the sport of lacrosse, got up and gave us a standing ovation. Um, you know, ringing the closing bell on Wall Street, uh, August 11th, 2001, literally a month to the day before 9-11. And after our first season, and I'm sure you know this story, maybe a lot of people don't, but um, we, you know, I wanted to try different things. And, and, and I thought Major League Lacrosse could, could own uh, uh, you know, maybe Labor Day weekend, right? Because no other sport, you got Memorial Day for the college game. I said, let's own Labor Day weekend. Well, it was a nice idea. Uh, obviously, it didn't really work out that well. But after that final game of the championship, um, we were out of money. The six teams were out of money. And we had a meeting set for September 11th, 2001. We all remember what happened then. So we got back on the phone on September 12th, and I will tell you this, um, every team all said uh, we're out, uh, with the exception of Boston. And Boston was the only team that said we're going to stay in, and I remember telling uh, Dave Morrow and Tim Robertson, I said, okay, let's get up the phone, I want to talk to you guys. And I had told them, Travis, that, you know, look, I got you guys into this. Uh, if we don't figure out a way to keep this going, there's not going to be professional outdoor lacrosse in our lifetimes. And we worked out a plan between the three of us, and we said, okay, we're going to keep this going. And we did. We decided to fund ourselves uh, to keep the sport alive. And, you know, th th there were great moments like that to see and you know six or seven years ago i launched the world series of youth across um always involved obviously with kids and family and hope and uh saw an opportunity to create a moment and a memory which is really what i wanted to do with major league lacrosse and uh there have been lots of them do you have a, a favorite or, or one or two fondest memories <laughs> I do, man. There's been a lot of great memories. First of all, the friendships. I mean, did, between Dave Morrow and myself, Dave was uh, like a little brother to me. He's become a very successful entrepreneur himself. And, you know, one thing a lot of people ask, you, you know, we never had a contract with each other. We never had a deal. It was always, we're doing this 50-50, he and I. Um, guys, just there were so many people that we met, but mentors to me, guys like Art Modell, Pat Bolin, Pat Bolin really kind of sitting in his office promising me, he says, Jake, if we get an opportunity to win a Steinfeld trophy, I promise we'll put it next to a Lombardi. And when they did, he did. And it was an incredible moment for, uh, for me personally, but for the league to legitimize. I always wanted to legitimize the sport of lacrosse. We never seemed to get that, that, that opportunity to, have a, to be in the conversation with baseball, basketball, and hockey. And I, and I always said it, our athletes, uh, I would put any one of our athletes up against any basketball player, any football player, as far as conditioning goes, love of the game, passion, uh, th than any other sport. And that's what I wanted to do. And early on, I was able to put deals together with ESPN, um, Bud Light, you know, my friend Tony Pontoro, um, and it, it was early with Sobe, and then we got the Gatorade, and then Coca-Cola. But, it, it, I mean, the Hurricane Games uh, were was something that was just incredible. Guys like Dave Gross, 
who has done such an amazing job and did an amazing job as commissioner. Obviously, the Baltimore team, uh, you, you know, had, had, had always done well. But Boston, um, those guys always stepped up. The guys in Boston from day one, Travis, when the league was done after season one, they said, we're staying with this thing. Um, it's about the quality of owners. Uh, guys like Pat Bowen, as I go back to, uh, not only was a mentor, but became a great friend of mine. And I learned so much about the sports business and marketing uh, in pro sports. It, it just was a great, it's been a great adventure. And uh, hey, listen, you know, your kids grow up and you have to let them get up and go on their own. And uh, whether it's the name MLL, it's professional lacrosse. And to see it hopefully thrive in the future and uh, and grow, that's what I, that's really what I want to see. Yeah, that was going to be my last question to, to leave you with. What do you hope for in terms of professional outdoor lacrosse moving forward? Success, man. You know, uh, everybody talks about growing the game. I think there's a lot of challenges. You, you know, um, the the market is still very small. You know, the sport of lacrosse, we talk a lot about. I mean, listen, um, I kind of coined the phrase the, the, the fastest growing game in the country. It was in the Wall Street Journal. I kind of looked back at it uh, in 2001. And I remember sitting on Charlie Rose uh, and, and, and he had the newspaper open. And he read the quote, he says, Jake, so uh, you say, uh, you know, lacrosse is the fastest growing team sport in America. Um, is it documented anywhere? I said, no, Charlie, I, I just said it. He goes, well, if you said it, I guess it is. Uh, I really believe that as passionate as the base is, we need to get more people playing and more importantly, showing up at games. And even more importantly, watching the games, because that's really what it all all wraps around. You know, uh, it, it's it's about sponsors. It's about uh, being able to market. But most importantly, it's about putting people, you know, but TC Mo's in the seats. And I would always say, Travis, I always counted the people in the seats and not the empty seats, because, you know, uh, seeing our first sellout, uh, at an all-star game that we did in Bridgeport with the Bluefish. Uh, those are great moments. So my kids grew up with the MLL. I mean, you know, I have a daughter who's 28 and my three sons, 26, 21, and 19. Um, they, we have fond, fond memories. And I still think that the old logo is the best. <laughs> there you go. And we'll end it th with that. Jake, uh, we appreciate the time. And thank you for that vision you, you had 20 years ago. We The pro game wouldn't be where it is with, without that vision. So we appreciate that. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Travis, good luck, buddy. Happy New Year to everybody. Be safe. 21 uh, is going to be huge. Don't quit.